Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Rogers, and for the demo project I made a magneto-rheological fluid. A magneto-rheological fluid, or ferrofluid, is a type of fluid that responds to a magnetic field. So we'll jump right in and look at the ingredients. Uh, first I needed a, a, a surfacant, so I tried to make oleic acid by myself. I did that using the olive oil you see here mixed with the sodium hydroxide and the lye to create a soap. And then I acidified that soap using the hydrochloric acid you see, and um, I created some oleic acid. Uh, after I tried that enough, I gave up and bought the oleic acid you see in the green top bottle um, from an online store. Now that was just one part. Now what you need for the ferrofluid is ferric chloride, which is a PCB etchant you can buy from Radio Shack, um, some steel wool that you can get from anywhere really, and then ammonium to mix with those two things to create the magnetite. Um, I used uh, coffee filters to help filter some of the, ferric, the nasty stuff out of the ferric chloride. And lastly, the carrier fluid that we used was kerosene in the big plastic bottle with the blue label. And that is uh, what, what the oleic acid coated magnetite was carried, carried in. Now, to kick off, the first thing we needed to do was take our ferric chloride and create ferrous chloride. Um, this because it takes a mixture of ferrous and ferric chloride in order to create magnetite when you mix it with ammonium. So what I first did was I got the ferric chloride out here as you can see and I mixed 10 milliliters of ferric chloride with 10 milliliters of water and I added steel wool until I got this green mixture that you can see me stirring up here. And Here I am adding more steel wool until you get the right amount. So what this is, it's the green stuff is ferrous chloride. And what you do is you filter that and you can see me filtering it here and we had to filter it because you get like some extra crud from the undissolved steel wool. So we filter it out so that we have ferrous chloride, which is that green greener stuff that's coming out. You can see the bottom there. And we add more ferric chloride to it. And here I am doing that. We want it into um, a two to one ratio. So if you remember, we only added 10 milliliters of ferric chloride the first time to make ferrous a complete ferrous, so we're going to add 20 milliliters of ferric chloride this time. Um, and this is because the ammonia, when it gets mixed in, participates in a uh, reaction with both the ferrous and the ferric chloride salts, and it's trying to create magnetite. Now here we take a break to put on our safety goggles because we're about to open up the ammonia, the ammonium, and you know ammonia gas is bad for your eyes, and if you breathe in too much of it, you'll die. So we move to under the vent hood. And we make sure we got our safety glasses on. The next step is where we add the ammonia. So we add the ammonia drop by drop, stir by stir, because if you don't, you get a re rusty, red, muddy color that's not what you want. But what the ammonia does here is it participates in the reaction with both the ferrous and the ferric chloride salts um, to create um, ammonia chloride gas. And that's what comes off underneath the vent hood. And what's left behind is the magnetite, which is an iron and oxygen uh, particle, and that's what's great, has great magnetic properties. So we do that under heat, and we add the oleric acid, which you just saw, and that's the surfacant. So the oleric acid binds the, the magnetite on the nanometer scale. Then we add the kerosene, and this is because both magnetite and oleic acid are insoluble in water. However, oleic acid is soluble in kerosene. So we mix the kerosene in there to break down the oleic acid to really create that final binding so that we get no clumping in our final result. Uh, it separates into two layers, bottom's water, top is kerosene, and after we mix it together you'll see me extract the top uh, kerosene layer, that's our ferrofluid. So here I am pulling it out, you remember to pull the top, the bottom is the water, and if you try to add magnetic field to the water part, all the magnetite will just clump. But in the kerosene layer, the oleic acid has bound the magnetite so that it won't clump. Here's my demo. I've got a strong permanent magnet underneath there, and it is very reactive to the fluid. You can see I can bring the fluid up the wall of the glass. I can definitely, definitely um, make the fluid react. And lastly, to give another demo of it, um, I put it in a plastic baggie, and you can see it's a fluid. Plastic's not magnetic. So the fluid in the baggie will uh, respond to the uh, magnet. 